Hi, I'm Kyle Smith with Haggerty. Today we're working on my 1965 Chevrolet Corvair Corsa. We're going to be diagnosing and repairing the sloppy shifting. One of the things to always remember as you're going to jack up your classic car is to check your factory service manual to make sure that you are in fact lifting it in the appropriate place. I know for a fact that right in front of the rear wheels there is where the pinch weld meets the frame and that is going to be the lift point on this car and will get us up nice and high and secure. And of course, similar to jacking up a vehicle, make sure that when you're positioning your jack stand, you put it in a safe location. So this here, we're actually positioning it on the lower control arm for the rear suspension. Uh, so it was set up to support the vehicle weight. You can see you do have to be careful because the emergency brake cable comes through on the back side of this. You want to make sure not to pinch that, um, potentially run into problems down the road. But this will be a nice secure spot for us this time. Here in the front, I'll be picking up the entire front end of the car by the center cross member for the suspension. Makes it a little bit quicker than doing it side by side, but you do have to be careful to actually get it centered and in the right spot so the car picks up nice and square. So I just picked this car up, been driving it for a while, been having some trouble with the shifting. It's been really hard to find first gear, especially at a stop or if I'm downshifting from third. Reverse has been easy to find. It hasn't been popping out of gear. It really leads me to think that the shifter and the linkage going back to the transmission has a lot of slop in it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start off by looking at the shifter itself to see if there might be the problem there before we work our way back towards the transmission. It's always easiest to start at the shifter and work your way back rather than diving straight into the transmission as this is the cheapest area as well as the easiest to get to. All right, so our first step in the process is to remove these kind of under pan trays. They protect our shift linkage and our throttle cable and a couple of the uh, wiring bits. They're all held with these quarter inch kind of coarse thread screws. And they take a little bit of effort to get off and you gotta make sure they don't fall on your face, uh, which is why you'll see that I'm wearing safety glasses is there's a lot of nasty undercoating under here and about 50 years worth of junk that will fall in your eyes. You drop that down and then slide it out the back. So you can see now that we've got the underneath cover removed, what we're looking at here, we've got the heater box for all the heater assembly. Next we've got the emergency brake cable. This is the clutch cable which is actually a solid linkage for most of the large transition there. And then this rusty housing here is actually our shifter tube which we're going to be uh, reworking and rebuilding a little bit there. And then this is actually the accelerator linkage. Fortunately, with that cover over it for most of its life, most of this remains pretty well clean and neatly kept. Um, so it's a lot easier to work under than one would assume for the underside of a 50 year old car. So we're here underneath the more front portion of the car and we've got four bolts that hold on the shifter base. That is also holding on the shifter tube that we're working on. So in removing these, I'm removing all four just because I want to take the shifter out the top as well. Here for our last one, just to make sure it's supported. I take the ratchet off and I do the last couple thread turns just by hands using my fingers. And then I can keep one hand up here to support it. And here it should just pop right off. And there we've got it. You can see here, this is the base of our shifter where it comes through the carpet. Somebody, it looks like they used some cheap grease some time ago and they greased it while it was still together so it didn't even get to where it needed to go. Uh, so we're gonna pull all this apart, re-grease it and make sure we don't have a squeak and that everything functions well as it should. Here on the interior of the car, we're gonna go ahead and remove the two screws that hold the shifter base in place. There's one on the rear and one on the front. As well as that, we will unscrew the shift knob and then go ahead and pull this base right off. Then we can go ahead, flip the carpet up and pull the shifter out from underneath the carpet. Part of the diagnosis was taking the shifter out and looking at it for excessive play. And you can look up in here and see where the ball rotates through and that's the actual shifter movement. You can see I'll try and work it with my hand here. Uh, looks like there's, it's a little dry, uh, could use some lubricant in there that's actually going to do something. I'd give it an 8 out of 10, which is workable for this car. Um, I'm not going to be driving it all the time and I'm not going to be shifting incredibly quickly. 
Doesn't look like there's anything wrong with it. Our problem looks to be a little bit further down the road. Look. So it looks like we just found the part that was causing that sloppy shifting. But you can see here, this is what we're, this is part of what we're looking to fix with this. You can see this pin goes through. This is the selector shaft going into the transmission. And this is the shifter fork on the back. So when you're moving the shifter inside, you're actually rotating that a little bit. And this pin here has worn this coupling almost all the way around. So it's more of an oval than anything else. So it's allowing a lot of play for us. Um, so we're going to change that out. That's going to be part of what we're doing today. So what we're after here is this little cotter pin. And if we're lucky, we can rotate the pin just enough that we can get a set of pliers on it. And then try and straighten it out a little bit, a good bit. Try and pull down on it hard enough. There it is. So we won the battle. Looks like, and the war, which is nice. So I'll leave that there, and you can see we've disconnected that coupling there now. And so what comes next is this bar here. It has a bushing on one end, and then it's solid mounted on the other. This is actually the stabilizer for the shifter. And it is just a half inch, two half inch nuts right here. And so we'll just pop this off and take it off as an assembly so we don't lose any of the adjustment that it has. There, we've got that freed up now too. There's one final thing holding the back part of the shifter up and it's actually right here and it's supposed to hold some type of grommet in there. There, we got it. So now that we've got it out of the car, you can see this is what's right below the shifter base in the car. The shifter comes down, sits right in here, and that's what controls forward, back, and left to right, which is actually shifting the gears in the transmission. You can see here, as I move this around, it's got a lot of excess play in just about every single direction. And that would be because there's supposed to be a bushing it's tucked right back in here onto the shaft. What we're gonna do, since that plastic bushing is completely shot, we're going to be replacing it with this brass one, or I'm sorry, this bronze bushing. Uh, this bronze bushing is going to take away all of this slop, make this nice and tight so we don't have any excess play while we're in neutral or in any of the gears. Um, it's going to require drilling a couple holes in here, getting this set in place, a couple taps with a hammer, should be just fine. Going to have nice tight shifting here in no time. So next step, as we're working on this, we're going to install our nice billet clamp. Before we can do that, we have to get everything apart, including this tension clamp always works best to spray just a little bit of penetrating oil. Uh, this one seems to be breaking loose quite nicely now that I've done that. And we'll take it all off, slip it apart, get that bronze bushing installed. So there, we finally got our clamp apart. Something I always like to do is make sure to just put everything back together in kind of the order that you're pulling it apart. But fortunately, I'm only doing the shifter part right now, so it's the only thing on my workbench. So I'll kind of lay everything out. Sometimes I'll write on the workbench exactly which parts go where or the order of things, kind of number it out on the bench. If it's staying apart for anything longer than probably a couple hours, I like to bag everything in Ziploc bags and write on a paper tag inside the bag and then also write on the bag. Um, oftentimes, people will write just on the plastic bag. It's not necessarily the best idea because the first time you touch that with an oily or a greasy hand, it's gonna take that right off. And then you just have a bunch of bags with bolts in them that aren't gonna really tell you anything. And I was warned that it's gonna be difficult to get this coupling out of this tube. They've been together for 50 years now. We're gonna to have to soak it with something penetrating, let it sit for a little bit. We're probably gonna end up using a hammer, which I'm not that excited about. I don't really like hammering on much on my car, but Really, it's our only option in this situation to bring out a little bit of brute force. Looks like we got lucky here. I went ahead, soaked it with some penetrating oil, and I broke out my chisel, and just a couple taps with a small hammer, surprisingly, um, actually loosened it right up, and you can see it's marching its way right back. 
giving us a nice good look here, which is nice because we do have to slide a bronze bushing over this end as well. And if we would have mushroomed this up or made it real difficult on ourselves, um, should it be any tougher than it is. So nice little victory here for us. So you can see here, we're taking off what amounted to a Band-Aid fix here. They had replaced the plastic bushing because this is the easier one to get to. And then you can see they put a hose clamp around it here on the outside. What that's done is it eliminated the play on this end of the shifter shaft. However, that works, helps the seal going into the transmission, does not help the other end for the shifter. So it was a good thought, it was a good try, but really we can do better than this. We're going to do better than this right now. So you can see here, we got the Band-Aid fix taken out. It's a split plastic coupling. Uh, it's got a threaded hole on it to hold it in. You can see that all the grease that they kind of tried to smear around it, or it looks like some kind of spray lubricant that they went at it with, um, none of it actually got inside and was actually doing anything. It was just wearing away at the plastic. We can do better than this. We're gonna put the bronze bushing in there instead of this, so then we don't have to lubricate it as much. It's gonna be borderline self-lubricating. So this will be um, a thing of the past. This was great 50 years ago. We can do better than this now. We'll see, uh, hopefully it will go together just as easily as well. So now that we've got everything off the opposite end at the transmission, we can actually slide this shaft out here. You kind of have to rotate it a little bit and it pulls nice and cleanly. Out of there. And we can kind of give it a look. It's actually fairly lightweight, so it's not affecting the shift too much. It's got a decent amount of stiffness to it, but we're gonna to have to clean up kind of everything on both ends. So from this end, removing all this old grease and then greasing it properly, all the way to the other end where we're going to have to clean off all of this rust and make sure we've got a good seal that we can put our uh, new billet shift piece into. So we do need to clean up most of the rust off of this. Fortunately, it's basically surface rust you could use just a small die grinder or anything with a real light sandpaper on it. Um, personally, I don't like pulling out the power tools just to do a small job like this. I just use red scotch Bright or even the green if I'm feeling less aggressive. Um, and this will clean it up. It'll get it smooth enough for us to work. Um, we really don't have to take off that much in order for it to work. As much as I'm wearing scotch Bright uh, pads, all of these, they just kind of go by the color is the grit that you're working with. So it doesn't necessarily equate to a fine sandpaper. Red is the one I prefer. It does leave marks on the finished surface when you're done working with it. Green is a little bit finer. That's going to leave less marks on it. Usually if you're working with green, it's typically paintable right after. I'm just gonna be greasing something and shoving it right back underneath the car. This will make quicker work of it than you working with a green Scotch-Brite. And that's actually gonna be smooth enough for us since we're going to be greasing it and putting it in the bronze bushing. Um, which should go in about this far. So we've got the end of the support tube all cleaned up and ready to accept our bronze bushing. We're gonna set it on there and then we're just gonna lightly tap it in with a hammer because it's just a little too tight to hand fit. Lightly snug it in until it's right even. So as we're getting ready to drill the holes to secure this bronze bushing, what I always recommend is to use a center punch like this one and it will allow you to set the hole that your drill bit is going to be starting into. So something like that, you can see it started right there. We'll give it another tap just to make sure. Then we can set our drill bit right into it. So what I'm doing here is I am using a self-tapping screw to establish threads in this outer housing. And what that's gonna do is allow us to put in a bolt that will allow to hold that bronze bushing in place. We don't have to go very far with it. 
and then back it right back out and it will establish some threads in that outer housing. So now that we've got our threads established, we've got this much shorter screw and then also a tooth washer to help keep it in place. And we're gonna start that one in its home with those new threads that we just made with the self-tapping screw. Hopefully it'll start nice and easy for us. There it is. And tighten it down just a little bit. With any luck, it'll be just the right length, which it looks like it's just a little bit long, so we're gonna have to file off the end of each screw just a little bit once we get them in there. Now I'm filing off the ends of each thread just to make sure that there's no interference there. I'm having to be fairly careful because the bronze of that bushing is actually a lot softer than the screws. So I'm having to make sure I'm pretty well only touching the screws while I'm doing this. It's okay to take off a little bit of the bronze, but I wanna make sure and leave as much of it as I can so that the shifter still has a nice round piece to ride in. So we've got the bronze bushing installed in the transmission end of this shifter support housing. We're going to test fit and make sure that we did take enough off of those screws that everything will rotate cleanly. Then we're going to move over to the other end, make sure we can get everything set up there so we can get this back in the car. And it looks like that will work perfectly. Allows nice, so that is the gate side to side, and then it also allows the front to back. Let's see, it looks like it's just a little bit tight. There it is. Front to back and side to side. So we're here on the shifter end rather than the transmission end that we had just finished up. We've got our bronze bushing here, and when we look at it, slipping it in, you can see it falls right into place, so we need to recess it 5 16ths of an inch inside just to make sure we have plenty of clearance. And so we'll drill the holes, the three holes that we need around the exterior, and then hold this in with those self-tapping screws. What I'm doing on this end is I'm trying to evenly space the three bolts that are going to hold that bushing in. Uh, with that, if I evenly space them out, hopefully it'll support it a little bit more in a cradle rather than Whereas on the back side, we can only get to a few of them. So they kind of all on one side, putting a little bit of a weird side load on it. Um, this one will space them out nice and evenly. So they'll be kind of triangulated on it. So since the screws that we're working with were just a little bit too long, I set the bushing in there and then I got the bushing clamped in place with just that one screw. And then I'm going to drill holes in the other two. Um, so those bolts will pass all the way through and make sure to hold that in place for a long time. There you go. And you can see we've got a nice back and forth. You can see we don't have any of that play that we had before that was coming through this joint here. And so this is gonna be fantastic, give us a lot better shifter feel in the car. So now that we've got the bronze boring parts in place, we're gonna add the nice fancy shiny bits that are actually, um, I guess you would say prettier. With this, this is the new shift coupling. You can see compared to our other one here, not only is it prettier, this one the pin is starting to fall out of, 
and uh, there's rubber all in here that's slightly melted and all greasy and these holes are out around. So we're replacing all of this slop with this nice billet piece. Um, this I found from a Corvair vendor. It's all nice and machined, nice and tight. There's no slop in it. You're gonna get a little more vibration from the transmission up all the way to the shift knob, but it's something I'm gonna live with because that two to three shift is gonna feel fantastic. So we're sliding our shift coupling into place as I'm working on this one, we're kind of just putting everything where I think it should be just based on my previous experience, because since we rebuilt so much of it, none of the dimensions are gonna carry over from that previous worn out piece. Once we get it all together, we'll put it in the car, we'll make a final adjustment, make sure we have all the gears and can actually access reverse. So I'm just adding a little bit of grease here to all of the shift points. So we can make sure that we tighten everything up. We also wanna make sure that it's still nice and slippery. There's nothing more enjoyable than getting a bunch of red waterproof grease all over your hands. This is a great time to do just that. So I got the shifter roughly in place and what I'm going to do is actually tighten everything up from the bottom before I finish tightening the carpet around it. Uh, that'll make sure that it's actually set in place before I set all the carpet in. All right, so at this point we are undoing what we did previously which means we're in the process of reassembling. So we're going to put the shifter end in first, supporting the other end with my foot. And that's gonna allow me to kind of get everything lined up here before we go back to the transmission end and have to get everything lined up there. What we're gonna do back here is we're gonna tighten the shifting support rod over here on the side or the stabilizer rod. And what that's gonna allow me to do is it will be supported on both ends at this point and then I can go up to the front and get the shifter fully seated um, inside the car. And then we can work our way back to attach everything to the transmission. So we'll go ahead, slip that guy over. One more double check and then we're down on the other end. Looks like we're still a little bit short. So we're gonna loosen this clamp up just a bit and then it should slide out and we won't be able to get our adjustment set. There, we got it. So what I did there was I was spinning the wheel to make sure that the transmission was indeed in neutral and that will allow me to adjust our shifter up front to make sure that we've got this set at the correct depth. But first we'll tighten up our support and our stabilizer rod. We'll adjust our shifter to where we want it to be in neutral, tighten down our clamp here, and then we're actually going to be done except for attaching that belly plan. Thank you for watching. Hope you found this video informative. If you like what you saw, please subscribe. If you'd like a detailed list of the parts used in this episode, please look in the description below.